What's up everyone? I'm Melissa McCack from Room 51 and this is Teach the Teach on the Dice Tower where I teach you how to teach a board game and in this video I'll be covering Chai. Now this is a how to teach video, meaning I am assuming you already know how to play this game and now you're looking to teach it to other players. There are plenty of ways to teach games, this is just a way that has worked for me and could possibly help you out if you have any sort of difficulties teaching games or chai in particular. I always start off with three main things. The story behind the game, where you're running your own little tea shop and you're uh, fulfilling orders for tea and everything. Uh, second being the objective of the game, where you're just trying to be the person with the most victory points by the end. And then third, how the game ends. This game ends after five rounds and that's it. You count up points. I'm going to be running this video as though you're teaching this to newcomers to the hobby. So maybe you're using this as a gateway game. If you are teaching this to people who are not necessarily newcomers to the hobby, you might want to skip over some of the stuff. But anyway, let's get into it. I would, especially with people who are uh, newcomers, I want to start off with pretty much the focus of the game. I point their attention to their uh, fulfillment card. After setup, everybody sort should have some sort of fulfillment card that they have reserved in their own play area. So you could point their attention to that. I immediately point their attention to the points system, right? So I say anything with this sort of symbol, that's how many points you would get. And then I let them know that the way to fulfill this order is by having all of the ingredients that are listed there and the particular colored tea leaf that you need in order to fulfill that card. And then you could just let them know that you'll get into that a little bit later, the uh, tea leaf especially. From there, you could go right into the player aid, point their attention to this, and I just go straight from here. I let them know that you're gonna have one action on your turn and you will have a choice of three different actions to choose from. And I go from top to bottom on this player aid, starting off with the visit the market action. I let them know that this is probably the most complicated part of this entire game, but it's not too bad. So I let them know, I let them see the uh, market itself. And the way I explain it is you pretty much, you pick one uh, type of flavor tile that you want, and then you'll take everything that is connecting to it minus diagonally. So for example, if I wanted the green tile, I would take this green tile and I'll take everything that is touching the green tile. And then I say how the cost is determined. I say that you are going to look at the rightmost tile in that grouping and that's how much it costs. And then I show them the different uh, rows um, or rather columns that there are, right? So I show like this is uh, one cost, two costs, and then three costs. So if I was to take all three of these, it would cost me three coins. Uh, so on and so forth. You might want to explain to them if there's a uh, wild in the market, just letting them know, like, for example, if I wanted to take this yellow tile, this is not considered um, attached to these wild tokens. Wild tokens are their own separate entity for market purposes. And then that's pretty much it. Then from there, you could go into the second thing that you could do. Uh, so taking items from the pantry. So then I just point their attention over to this little pantry over here where you could take uh, three tokens, any of these three tokens from this uh, pantry portion or uh, even some from the bag and you could mix it all up. From there, I let them know about the reserve um, one customer and use an ability action. So that's where I point their attention to the board where you could reserve a customer and I let them know why you might want to reserve a customer where it's like, hey, I don't want you to fulfill that order. I want to fulfill that order. So you will reserve it that way nobody else could fulfill it except for you. This is when you want to bring back up the leaf saying that you want to be careful because if you need the blue leaf here but all and I'm the blue player and all my blue leaves are about to uh, expire, I guess, or they're about to run out, you won't be able to fill that. And you let them know that once all those leaves, that particular color leaves are gone, nobody can fulfill any of those orders. They all get removed from the deck, from uh, your reserve area, all that stuff. Um, so this also helps newcomers to uh, uh, keep in mind what you're trying to do and sort of like where the tension comes from in this game. And then you could talk about the usability action. Uh, you don't have to explain all of the abilities that are in the deck, just the three that are displayed out at first. Um, and you can just explain, and you might want to explain what the symbology on each of them means so that way it becomes a little bit more, uh, or a little bit easier to remember what they each do, but it's okay if they are asking questions like, hey, what does that ability mean again? That's totally fine. That'll probably happen. 
And then after that, you let them know. So you'll take one action and then you could fulfill your order. Just one order. Emphasize that you can only fulfill one order per turn. Uh, and let them know that whatever order you're fulfilling, you put everything into this little teacup and then you get the associated tip token, letting them know that this is going to give you some sort of maybe some money or some sort of uh, special benefit and whatnot. This is also how you tell them how the round ends, because when all of the tip tokens are gone, the round ends and you move on to the next one. And then you just want to reiterate, so whoever has the most money and the most points by the end of the game will win. And that's pretty much how to teach Chai. I think that from there you could pretty much get right into the game. Um, and you might have to explain some, maybe a little bit of strategy, not, not so much hand-holding, but uh, just sort of the things that I was saying in terms of what to focus on, uh, or what you might want to focus on, rather. But if you have any sort of questions, please leave them down below in the comments, and please let me know how you like to teach this game. I would love to know. Anyway, thank you so much for watching. I'll catch you next time.